Hey guys, uh, Kieran Eklund here and i am um, got the pleasure today of catching up with the heaviest All Black to date. Uh, Namir Tealada, how are you mate? Good, thanks bro. Nice man. <laughs> and um, yeah, obviously coming into the end of lockdown now, how's it been for you man? You're obviously still working by the looks of things and um, you know it's a pretty weird time but you've been keeping busy? Yeah, very busy bro. Um, obviously when the lockdown happened, first started obviously the the pharmacy and it had to stay open and and so uh, i've just been busy actually um doing deliveries drug dealing and uh <laughs> <laughs> getting this wine there out there too uh nice man yeah so um yeah how long have you been, been you guys been into the um, chemists and stuff like that unikim down in wellington is it yeah unikim brooklyn down here in wellington we uh we bought this last year actually yeah it's been busy uh, I, I, we've only been back uh, a year and a bit now, so yeah. I should come back from France and straight into it. Kids back into school, and um, yeah, straight into this business, and obviously with the wine too. Yeah, man. So you know, obviously, you're a rugby player. Played um, sixty games for Wellington, hundred for the Canes. You forty three tests for the All Blacks, mate. How, how did that go? And what were some of your highlights? Um, you know, when you're back down here with your successful career in New Zealand? Uh, highlights will have to be um, like going through the, the age grades and through the teams and that with some of my best mates that I grew up with. Um, yeah. Obviously, Pity Wuku, who I grew up with in Wainui. Um, he obviously just lives down the road from me here in Petonia. And uh, and with Ma too. So we all grew up together, played uh, age grade and whatnot. And then... Uh, Sort of made the uh, the senior grades together, and, and that 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 alone was a highlight for me uh, when I look back at my career in New Zealand. Awesome. Um, getting to do it um, with those guys traveling the world and playing rugby and, and just enjoying life. Yeah, it's pretty um pretty special. Like, some of the friendships you can make, and especially from what you're saying, like, doing it from a um, young age right up to playing All Blacks and stuff, where right? it's pretty unreal and. Um, not many people get to experience that, so obviously a special uh, memory for you. Yeah, very lucky, bro, and something I'm, I'm forever thankful for. Obviously, all the friendships that you make over over the teams that you are involved with, and uh, and obviously the people that you come across, um, you know, throughout the world, the country, and no, nah, just just grateful that I got to do it, and and obviously, bonus as well, got to put the black jersey on too. So yeah, it's pretty awesome. Well, that's um, you know, everyone asking the question, you know, why, why rugby? Why do you do that? Why do you choose? Why do you love it so much? And um, that that's definitely right up there for me, man. It's um, you know, the comradeship, going out with your mates and um, knowing that they're going to do the same for you and all this sort of stuff. The off-field stuff as well, you know. There's not many um, jobs we can go chuck a ball around with the best mates and um, yeah. you know, um, travel yeah, the world. To, yeah, well, that's it, bro. Yeah, that's <laughs> it. It's very free. Good. <laughs> yeah, well, as they say, you're the heaviest all black, mate. You would have put a few, fair bit of food away, eh? Oh, bro, I think my own pity will give me a go at that. <laughs> do you reckon that would have um, come like, do you reckon that would have altered your selection process a little bit, knowing that they have to take you away on tour and having to feed you as well? <laughs> or maybe, maybe not this, so budget might be a bit tight. <laughs> yeah, obviously, didn't help me when the, the game changed and got a bit quicker. Obviously, yeah. they went for the. The so uh, slimmer, more athletic built um, uh, props. Oh, no, hard case, man. And um, yeah, so you had a successful career here in New Zealand and then took off up to France, mate. What was that like? Played for Toulouse and Bayonne? Yeah, Bayonne and uh, finished up in Narbonne. I was wicked. Oh. Uh, I got to spend most of my time uh, down the south of France. Um, oh. Yeah, wicked experience. Did you, um, did you learn any French along the way? Oh, you had to, mate, because uh, yeah. obviously all, everything's in, in French, all the trainings and and that. Yep. So if, if you if you don't um, if you don't learn the, the if you don't learn the, the, the language and get into the culture and all that, then you sort of get left left behind with the jokes with all the boys in it. So yeah, yeah, uh, we we yeah we uh, <laughs> that, that's <laughs> about that's about as far as it goes for me, mate. <laughs> I think oh, we do the no, typical no. Islander thing where you just uh, nod your head. <laughs> but did, you, oh, did, you, did um, you know? <laughs> oh, did you learn any good skills up there, mate? You learn how to cook French toast or anything like that? Nah, nah, bro. I didn't bother with that. 
apart okay. from uh, learning how to cook a mean barbecue. Oh, yeah, that's <laughs> fair. No. And is it, is it um, there in France where you start up your own wine company now? Is this where you um, found your love for wine? Yeah, yeah. It's just obviously being around the boys there. And um, and that's what we did was was sat around a table and, and drank wine. And, and I sort of fell in love with it. Um, obviously passionate about it now um, a bit yeah. more. And uh, that, that was what I was trying to do, like coming back and bring a little bit of that culture and lifestyle back here to New Zealand. Nice, man. And so, um, yeah, you started up your own little wine company. Um, do you want to tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, do, Cheval. So I met uh, a good mate of mine um, at a rehab centre in Toulouse. Well, rehab in, in a, you know, with the sports injuries and stuff like oh, that. Oh, I thought you were going to say, like, alcohol <laughs> rehab, right? <laughs> it's like, oh, it's not a good good start to a wine making com- uh, company, mate. You'll go to rehab. No. <laughs> yeah, no, no. It's a sports uh, rehab place. Oh, okay. So. Yeah, I'm glad we cleared that up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I obviously met my mate there. And uh, um, uh, his name's Cammy, Cammy Blank. And, and uh, his family actually own a vineyard, a massive vineyard out in uh, Genesta's. Um, and then one 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 day or a couple of years ago, actually, we uh, he invited me over to do a um, harvesting with his his family. Do like they they have it like a, a annual harvesting uh, where the whole family comes together and and do all the picking and everything, and then obviously make the wine and that. So I went along and did that, got to experience that, and then um, I said to him uh, after doing that, I said, "Oh, why not we?" Um, we take our own and and uh, import to New Zealand and use my contacts uh, here in New Zealand and um, that's how it happened. So I got him over here in, uh, last year and, and took him around a few places, uh, Martinborough and, and down Blenheim and got to do some wine tasting and um, yeah, we, that's how we kicked off and got these two uh, fine wine bottles here. I'll show it to you. Okay, so we'd, I don't know if you can see it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. The dishable. Nice, man. So that translates into, uh, that means two horses. And um, how we came about with that was, uh, obviously, we, we had to come up with a, with a name, a business name and a logo. Yeah. And um, we, I took this photo of, uh, of his family vineyard during the harvesting and um, his uncle had parked his old school car, Citroen, and I uh, took a photo of it. And um, just by chance, it was, it was a De Cheval, uh Citroen. Oh, old school you. ride. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's where we got the name. <laughs> oh, nice, man. Oh, that's pretty good. Eh? Nice to have a bit of a story behind the label as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's pretty exciting, eh? Obviously, um, completely different to the old rugby playing days or making wine and things like that. Pretty exciting, like new venture there. Very exciting, bro. Because uh, I sort of took uh, well, a couple of years off, just uh, just grinding. Just yeah. uh, I didn't catch up with anyone. I just sort of stayed home and just uh, yeah worked hard. And obviously down here working hard. Yeah. And um, and now this is all up and going. I sort of get to reconnect with uh, a lot of my my mates in there, and a lot of them didn't even know I was back in the country. Um, and, uh, a lot of my shock too. I'm um, doing this, so it's pretty cool. Uh, nice man. And um, yeah, you're saying before that you're pretty good mates with uh, Pity. He just lives down the road. Um, uh, do you still catch up with him very often? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see Pity all the time. Actually, nice. He's actually my delivery man. <laughs> oh, is he? Oh, I did. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out to him. Oh, nice um, man. And Ma just returned back from uh, from America. So he's uh, in quarantine, and uh, we've been keeping in t- uh, contact uh, just via text messages and that. So, yeah. No. And uh, obviously, going over to France and things like that, you meet some pretty cool people over there, and, um, you know, like you say, connections through rugby and things like that. Um, you know, make lots of mates over there. Yeah, heaps, right. It's actually quite cool, because uh, every team you play against, you always come up against someone that you know uh, yeah. obviously from from new zealand or but um obviously playing against a lot of uh the international boys like your douche and that 
Um, actually, I was lucky that I got to sit next to him in our in the locker rooms and sort of got to pick his brain a bit um, on how he sees the game of rugby and life. So that's that was quite special. Um, and and to this day, I still keep in contact with a lot of those French boys as well. And yeah, so uh, I don't know if you've heard, but um, the Super Rugby Comp have decided to do the new domestic um, format where they do all the New Zealand teams are playing each other twice, home and away game, um, 20 games over the next uh, 10 or 10 weeks after we can get back into full training. I think we've got three weeks of training and then we can get back into playing games, man. You excited for this? It'd be good to see oh, some local man. derbies. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, I'm pretty sure that the rest of New Zealand's hanging out to, to watch some, some rugby. It must be, must be tough for you boys though. Um, having to start and stop and then restart again. So you guys will be going into like a pre-season phase. Yeah, bro. Yeah. So um, we've pretty much been like um, double training sessions a day. We've, we're pretty well set up at home here to um, yeah. do it ourselves and our bubbles and things like that. Um, it's getting to the, like that stage now though. I think what it's been about six weeks Yeah. and I'm um, ready to go back and get some contact in there. Eh? Cause that is mate, conditioning us, getting us to, uh, you know, <laughs> get meters up and get under the um the bar as well so um yeah some sore bodies but we're looking forward to getting around and um doing some skills chucking the ball around and a bit of wrestling or getting us ready but yeah man so it'd be, be pretty interesting it was i think it was quite a shock to the system for the boys to you know have so much routine knowing what mm. our programs were and things like that and then yeah. there's been a lot of self onus now a lot of um you know, you got to take it on yourself and go and do the work and all that sort of stuff. Um, yeah, yeah. So it'll be interesting yeah. to see how everyone comes back from it. Yeah, it's true. It's going to be tough. Yeah. I see a lot of the boys in there being creative with the way they, uh, they're training in that. So, so I'm just wondering how the boys over in France are going because I know uh, I know the, the French over there, they you know such thing as schedules. They, they change on the go um, every day. So <laughs> I'm pretty sure they're doing it tough. Yeah, man. It's um uh, like you said, eh? You know, it's um, you know, you really got to use your imagination to do different sort of workouts and all that sort of stuff, and keep keep things fresh because yeah. else you just start going through the motions and um, yeah. yeah. And um, when we go on to level two or level one, what's the first thing you're going to be doing? Ooh. I've been lucky, bro, because I've been out there uh, right since the lockdown. So I don't know, maybe um, catch up more with my mates and that that I haven't mm. seen. Since yeah. the lockdown, um, head down to my local gym, build a body, shout out I to thought, those boys and, uh, nice. and catch up with those boys, yeah. Nice, man. And um, yeah, obviously you got your hands full at the moment, uh, working in the chemist and um, you got your wine company there. Um, well, what, what's the future looking like for you at the moment, man? You just head down? Yeah, man. Just, I don't know, I see where this takes me with this wine, this wine stuff. Um, actually, in the future, oh, we got... We've got a few things that are we're lining up for for the future with the wine stuff and obviously with the chemist too. So I'll be pretty busy with that. And uh, I've got two two little daughter girls as well, so they keep me busy. How's um how's lockdown been with the girls, man? With the obviously your two young daughters and um you know keeping them busy and all that sort of stuff. Oh, it's pretty hard, bro. Like hats off to all the teachers and that out there and <laughs> and all the solo parents. Um they're pretty busy like um we've got to find ways and ideas on to try to keep them uh keep them learning and uh and active too. Uh that's pretty tough gig man because my youngest she just uh a couple of seconds and then she's she loses it and she takes it out on <laughs> her sister and I have to step in there and, and stop it. Yeah. It sounds like me, mate. My flatmates are getting bloody sick of me, that's for sure. <laughs> it's these times that you got to put your head down and just grind, grind it yeah. out for your kids' future and pretty sure it'll pay off in the long run. Thank you so much for your time, man. And, um, you know, it looks like you got everything under control down there and things are going pretty smoothly and your transition from footy into what you're doing now is, seems to be working for you, man. So I'm um, really stoked Thanks for you. Cheers, brother. Cheers, brother. Thanks for that. And good luck to you as well. And all the best for uh, pre-season and uh, the rest of your career, bro. Uh, thank you so much, man.